host, Robert Judge, and today I'd like to talk about the different types of um, breaching situations we have for percussion cap rifles and pistols, actually, too. Uh, as you can tell here, I've brought my favorite CVA mountain rifle here. And as you can tell, it has a drum and nipple into the barrel. This is, this is a drum action. And this is what you'll find on a lot, the majority of your rifles today is, is this drum like this. Now the issues I have with this is that this drum screws into the, into the barrel. The threads aren't that big, they're not that deep. So you have to be careful of that. You want to inspect, when you're inspecting, you want to be able to inspect the threads in here when you're buying used. This is the nipple, the nipple screws in, into the drum. So you have the nipple into the drum, the drum into the barrel and then I filed mine off because I really don't use it I don't like to use it but there's a clean out screw here there's a screw here for cleaning out now I don't do that because I don't want to monkey with this the more you the more you mess with this the more likely you are to strip a thread or to wear those out and then notice it's right here right high pressure weak threads that's going to go fly out like a projectile and if I'm shooting my rifle this way the guy next to me could get this right in his ear. So, I file that off. Don't monkey with it. If I need to clean it out, I'll pull the nipple and get a pipe cleaner and work in there and work around. Or I'll, I'll take the nipple out, dunk this in some, put a bucket with some nice warm hot water, set it down inside there, let it set, take the ramrod with a cleaning patch on the end of it, and just push it down. And you siphon that water. It becomes like a pump. Push down. Pull up, the water comes in, sucks in through the hole, comes up into the bore, and as you go back and forth, you flush that hot water up and down, up and down, up and down, and believe it or not, the powder residue comes out. No magic formulas, no magic cleaning solutions, no expensive oils, whatever. Simple, good old water. And then you have to be soapy water. Now, if you want to throw a little soap detergent in there, that's fine. A little uh, Murphy's oil, that's fine. I just use regular water. Sometimes warm water, sometimes coffee in the camp. You know, coffee pot sitting there on the fire. It's a little old. I may not want to drink it. Of course, that's not true. I'll drink it anyway. But I'll pour a little coffee down there, just enough to set in there and loosen up that powder fouling. Flush it out. And well, you're good. You're good to go. Okay, that is the percussion drum mechanism. Now, there was also in the day, a good long time ago, they came up with what was called a patent breach. This is a patent breach. This is the breach area, the breach plug. If you notice, there's the plug. It goes in, screws into the end of your barrel. This is your tang. It's a short tang. But what makes it unique is this is where you put the nipple. The nipple screws in to this part right here. It's all built in one piece. A lot of people call these snails. And it goes, the nipple goes into here. There is no clean-out screw. Now, some of them, the old days, some in the, some in the originals, might have had a clean-out screw on the other side, on the other side of the barrel going in. This does not have a clean-out. Now, what makes this unique is you have, the, you have the nipple on here. The flash goes down. And look, this is the hole. This is it. Where, here, look at this. This was the original hole. That little dot right up there in the corner was the original hole on this. And I was having issues with that fouling up on my rifle. So I took this out and I countersank a new hole. Bigger hole. Powder can get down inside that a little bit. And then that flash from the, from the nipple, from the percussion on the nipple, can readily ignite that powder in the, ch in the chamber. So that's an improvement I made on this one. Now this particular one came off of a barrel that I took. I took it and I took this off and put a re, put a new plug in, new breech plug, and made it a flintlock. Flintlocks you don't need the nipples, obviously. They're just bored. They just have a hole in the side of the barrel. So that's why I have that. Now those are the ways. Those are the two ways that you know that you have for ignition for a percussion cap. Now. One of the best things you can do to have when you have a percussion cap rifle or pistol mechanism. My fingers are, don't have the feeling anymore. 
and I have a hard time holding that little cap to load them. I have a cap. I have a cap loader. You load up multiple cap number of caps inside here, and you just load them in there. And then there, there's caps in here. And then you just when they come to the top, you put it here, put it on the nipple, pull it off, and you got it. And you've got a little lanyard. You can tie it on your neck if you want to to keep it. And that's how I do it. For what it's worth, it works for me. You can do whatever you want. You can keep them in your caps and tins, but and when you have to reach in individually, it's tough. I would highly recommend this for hunting. I would highly recommend this for if you're going to the range. It's a lot easier. You just load up. You load up this tube full of caps, and then to get the next cap up, you just merely push it up, and you get a cap in there. And that's how that works. So, for what it's worth. Have a good day. Watch your top knot. Keep your eye on the back trail. See you again later. Bye-bye.